This one in particular, they instantly said that it has nothing to do with them because they have neither the political incentive nor a military incentive to target an Arab Druze town in the occupied Golan Heights. And it's quite frankly, at this point, between their denial and the fact that there is no independent investigation, it's not really clear who's responsible for this. But more importantly, and contrary to what Rabbi Fleischer just claimed, the families of the victims want nothing to do with further war. They have rejected, they have refused to meet with Prime Minister Netanyahu. They have refused to allow Israeli politicians to attend their kids' funerals. You can see video of them yelling at them to leave. And there was just a piece in Israel's leading newspaper today, Haaretz, talking about how the majority of the Jewish community don't want the blood of their children to be used to essentially fulfill further bloodshed and the agenda of this fanatical Israeli government that is using this tragedy, tragedy in order to promote more war. And the last thing I'll say, Piers, that I think is really, really important. If this incident were to take place a thousand times over, it still would not come close to the death toll in children that Israel has inflicted in Gaza over the past nine months. So anybody who's actually serious and and, and sincerely concerned about yeah. the killing of children and violence should be insisting on an immediate ceasefire in Gaza and the handing of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and the people around him to The Hague for the war crimes they have committed against tens of thousands of innocent civilians over the past several months. OK, before I go to Emily, if it wasn't Hezbollah, who was it? Look, it, it, like there are many possibilities, right? It could be potentially an errant Hezbollah rocket. It could be another group that launched it, or it could be a potential misfire of an Iron Dome missile or something. We're not really sure. The one thing that we do know, Pierce, is that the Israeli government lies through its teeth time and time again. They lied about who's res responsible for the killing of Palestinian-American journalist Shirin Abu Akhle. They lied about 40 beheaded babies on October 7th. They're just a machine of lies. And so you have to get an independent investigation to actually look into this and sort it all out. But even if it does turn out to be a Hezbollah rocket, if that is indeed what the evidence points to, it's almost certainly an accident because there is no incentive for that target to actually take place. And we should be looking to de-escalate tensions, not rising them up. That's how you actually save the future of the region and pull us back from the brink of war. You work towards de-escalation and you certainly don't allow this warmongering Israeli government to continue with this plan to wreak havoc throughout the entire region to achieve a level of dominance that it no longer has and it's desperate to hold on to. All right, Emily Shreddy, your response. I mean, I think it's highly ironic that he has the audacity to come on your show and talk about how Israel audacity. is targeting children when we're looking at what Hezbollah has done. Hezbollah leaders such as Samir Kuntar, who literally... Imagine uh, how could she has a straight face to go on a show and try to deflect the murder of 17,000 children and try to claim the kinship to 12... To, to 12 Druze Arab, Syrian Arab in a uh, Syrian village have nothing to do. It's unbelievable how these people lie. They, they, they are almost scary. When they lie, I, I get scared. I swear to God. No, this is not going to run really murdered an Israeli child face to face with the butt of his rifle. Hezbollah, who in previous wars murdered 50% of the civilians who were killed, were actually Arab Israeli citizens. There were rockets coming down onto Arab, majority Arab towns like Nazareth, killing Arab Israeli babies. There has been no differentiation by terrorist organizations when it comes to targeting Israeli citizens, whether they're Druze or Arab, Christian, Jewish, doesn't matter. If you're Israeli, that's fair game for terrorist organizations. And that is a policy they've had for many, many, many years. There is no reason to Israeli believe that suddenly Hezbollah, suddenly Hezbollah wouldn't be targeting children. It's patently absurd. These kids were not Israeli. It's patently absurd. Factual. And also what he's saying, also Emily, what he's Emily. saying, this also, is really what you're saying about the Druze communities, said, the majority, Emily, the ma stop interrupting me. The majority you're lying, ho. fight side by side. They out. fight side by side Emily, in the IDF. They fight side by side. Right I, know you're you're say, you. I know what you're going to say. I know what you're going to say. It's nonsense, and I'll tell you why. Because the Druze in that, the Druze in Majdal Shams were all offered citizenship, and they are eligible for citizenship anytime they want to take it. Whether or not they were citizens, they are eligible for it, and they are entitled to Israeli citizens. Some of them I'm were sorry, Israeli Emily, citizens. I do not know that 100% of Emily, them. I the do not know if 100%. Let me speak. Stop lying about Let who these me children speak. Are. Not you have been Israeli. lying the entire time. You came please on here and tried to say that Hezbollah, that Hezbollah. Please don't talk over each other. Have no incentive. 
Yeah. Me, Omar, with respect, Emily let you speak. Yeah, but you have to fact check her, Piers. She's lying. Uh, hang on. Uh, Emily, you can speak. Sure Omar, I did let em, Omar, really. you did speak without it. Omar, you spoke without interruption. Let Emily Carry respond, on. and I will then come back sure. to you, but let her respond. Sounds good. Go for it. Israeli citizens in the Golan. The Israeli citizens in the Golan Heights are entitled to Israeli citizenship. They have been offered, and many of them have accepted. The numbers are actually going up over time. In addition to that, I, as a journalist, have spoken to people in Majdal Sham. You see how she said they've been offered citizenship, and it's going up over time. That's 50 years since they started offering them citizenship. <laughs> They don't want to be part of Israel. Excuse me, since this started, they are very, very clear about what they want. And frankly, Yishai is correct. The Druze community doesn't put up with terrorist behavior, such as what Hezbollah did. And the idea that Hezbollah doesn't have an incentive to target Israeli children, whether Arab or Jewish, is absurd. Because since their existence, since they were founded, this is a policy that they have had. They have targeted civilians. That is why they're a terrorist organization. And I want to remind everyone of one more thing, that this terrorist organization is a direct proxy of the Islamic Republic of Iran. They're acting at the direction and at the behest of the Islamic Republic of Iran, and the rocket which was fired, according to Israeli sources and according to the IDF itself, was an Iranian-made rocket. So there, the, the Iran fingerprints from the Islamic Republic are all over this, the same as they are with every terrorist organization that Israel is dealing with now. And I agree with you, Shai, that we need to deliver a very, very strong deterrent, not punishment. This isn't about revenge. This is about deterring Hezbollah from attacking Israeli citizens. And they have sent over 6,000 rockets since October 8th. It's not enough, not Israel enough. This warmongering here is patently absurd. All right, Mayor, okay, let me, let me go. Let, let me just, just okay, let me just let Omar, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let, hang on, please. Omar, you respond to what Emily just said, then I'm going to go to, uh, to Rabbi Fleischer. Sure. Two things. First of all, she said these were Israeli children, and we could see when the Israeli military spokesperson was addressing this incident that he was interrupted by other Israeli officials to point out that they're not, in fact, Israeli. The Golan Heights are occupied Syrian territory, and a significant portion of the Syrian Druze community that lives in them refused Israeli citizenship, which tells you something. And the other thing about what these children and their but, families but, but want... But, Omar, do, do we actually... Omar, do, do we know how many of the children who died were Israeli citizens? None. I'm not entirely sure if any of them were or not, but I can tell you there is one thing that is really clear at this point, Pierce, that I think is really important, is you can listen to Emily and Rabbi Fleischer tell you about what the families of these, host of these kids want, or you can listen to the families themselves, who are widely quoted in the Israeli press, talking at this point about the fact that they don't want the blood of their children to be just to be used as justification for further bloodshed and they have referred to netanyahu as a war criminal and they want nothing to do with this government so yes you can listen to these propagandists tell you what their interpretation of these events events are or you can talk directly to the families of these children who were killed with this really incredibly tragic and, and horrifying incident and find out what they actually want and it has nothing to do with the lies that we've just heard from ishai and from emily so Okay, okay, all, Rabbi I have Fleischer. I mean, the family, so there's well, not a well, hang consensus on, let me, let me, on that. Emily, there's Emily, not a consensus let, at let all. me get it. Emily, let me get a Rabbi Fleischer, please. Rabbi Fleischer, I mean, it's uh, it's complex, this particular story, for the reasons that we are now uh, you know, discussing in this debate, is that we don't actually know how many, if any, of these children were Israeli school children. I, I assumed that, that most of them were. That appears not to be the case. Do you have any information? which can mm -hmm. say uh, Pierce, unequivocally uh, either I, way. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a little bit at, at wonderment at your question. As though it matters, these guys live, they're citizens or residents of Israel. What does it matter? They were shot at by Hezbollah, which shoots Hezbollah. into Israel. So we have all kinds of folks, minorities living in our land, all kinds. If they were Arab, that would be okay. They killed 12 kids because they're trying to shoot at Israel one way or the other. So that's what this is about. What exactly the identity of the kids were? Is that really important, Pierce? I, I, I don't quite understand the question. No, no, I, I know listen, Druze I think I don't, it, it I doesn't live, change the I, fact I, these children I work killed. with Druze every single day. I, and I always ask them, I say to them, tell me candidly, what do you think about living in Israel? They're like, you know, great country, but you guys are weak. You guys are weak vis-a-vis uh, -vis the jihad. He's a fucking racist piece of shit. He's one of the settlers that live in the West Bank who beat up uh, Palestinians and kill them and take their homes every day. He is the right-wing Masonic movement in Israel that has weapons, and they're going to be used against this idiot. Her name is Emily sooner or later, eventually.
God, I, I hear that every day. I work with them. They're in the army in Hebron. Yeah, yeah. I deal with them. They're in the civil administration. And I always say to them candidly, tell me. They're like, you guys are too weak. So what does it matter what exactly the, the, the status of these kids are? The kids should not be murdered by folks who, what they do is, is arm themselves with 150,000 rockets, Iranian paid, ready to shoot at Israel. It happened to have hit some Druze kids. Tomorrow will be Jewish kids. What's the difference?